We are now on air. Time for a total takeover. It's finally here. Finally. Welcome to a new episode. It's about to go down. Indeed, indeed, it's about to go down. It's yours truly, Dan Adams, a.k.a. the social conservative, the DA, and the prosecutor. And you are live right now with the Dan Adams Show, live on Facebook Live and live on Spreaker. So if you haven't got the deets, if you haven't got the details and things of that nature, I'm going to hit you up in just a second. But I'm going to let this music just ride on out, get my levels tight, and we're going to go ahead and continue with the show. Because this is, once again, the Dan Adams Show Live here on Facebook Live and on Spreaker. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening and checking me out right now, then you know that I'm live. But those who may not know and you want to pass along the word, tell them to hit me up. Go to Facebook.com slash Dan Adams Show. That goes right to my profile page and you'll see the Facebook Live video. Click on the play link. And if you go to Spreaker.com slash Dan Adams Go ahead and click on the live show link down at the bottom. Click on the play button and then click on the actual click on the link and it takes you to the actual show page. So you can go ahead and comment in the comment section in the speaker section and you can comment, of course, in the Facebook live as well. Because this is the Dan Adams show and it is July 24th and I need to go ahead and sign in uh, Skype. So if someone wants to call in, they can. And the number is 412 366 no, 412-301-3666. That's 412-301-3666. And I need to go ahead and just make sure that I'm live on both channels, on both apparati, as they say. And as I can see, I certainly am. So let's go ahead and get into the festivities this evening. <sighs> I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I really hate the fact that I'm actually having to talk about this right now and have to actually bring this up and actually be a topic of discussion for tonight. But I'm going to want, I want to go ahead and get the sad stuff out of the way before we go ahead and get into the nit grit down and dirty grimy stuff that we get into here on the Dan Adams show. And let me let me just state this before I even start. I want to first first of all give honor to God and to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for allowing me to uh grace these airwaves and once again go ahead and share the share button. <laughs> on this Facebook live broadcast and on the Spreaker broadcast, share, 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 you know, let the word be known, let the, let the, let the word get out and tell a friend to tell a friend that yours truly is live. This is the Dan Adams show. And let me go ahead and get, uh, get this out of the way. Cause this is very heartbreaking. Um, been messing with my soul most of the day today. And I just, I mean, mm. Charlie Gard's parents in legal fight to save baby's life. Charlie Gard's parents are in their legal fight to give their baby a chance at life. After their five-month legal battle with London's Great Ormond Street Hospital in the European court system, Chris Gard and Connie Yates, it is now too late for any experimental treatment to help their 11-month-old recover. Now, I'm not going to continue reading this article from LifeSite News. I'm just going to go ahead and speak on this for about a minute or two, and I'm going to just leave it in God's hands because that's where I need to leave it. The fact that it took this particular turn, this particular outcome that has come in front of our eyes for all the world to see, just shows, ladies and gentlemen, that socialized medicine, that's right, socialized medicine, single payer health care does not work. This 11 month old baby, that's right, 11 month old baby did not have a chance, a fighting chance. And you know what? Let me take that back. The baby did have a fighting chance if it was born, not in that system that it was born in, not in the system that bureaucrats and, and, and non medical, non uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Those who partake in the medical field, making decisions on behalf of this 11 month old, stringing along these parents who all they wanted, ladies and gentlemen, all they wanted to do was to give their baby a fighting chance. Give their baby a fighting chance. That's all they wanted. That's all they were asking for. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, that's what should be granted 
in this case. And the fact that this European court and this hospital fought tooth and nail to not allow these parents to bring their baby somewhere else. They didn't even allow the baby to leave the hospital. Now, I wonder what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder what I wonder what's going to happen now with this whole scenario with the baby is going to be taken off of life support. I'm wondering, ladies and gentlemen, if they're going to allow this baby to go home with the parents and let the baby die with their parents or it is going to just just let this pull the plug, let the baby die in the hospital and then it's going to go on about their business. How disgraceful is that? How despicable is that? You want to talk about this, you can. 412-301-3666. That's 412-301-3666. I'm on live speaker. Excuse me. I'm on live on Facebook Live and Spreaker. Go to my page at Dan Adams Show on Facebook. And if you go to slash Dan Adams at Spreaker.com, go ahead and click on the links. Get into the comment section on the show page on Spreaker. And if you're on Facebook Live, you're checking me out right now, you can comment in the video page there. Now, going to go ahead and move away from the sadness of today in regards to the innocent baby Charlie Guard. This just came hot off the presses, ladies and gentlemen. And this is something very interesting. Listen up. This is off of townhall.com. Revealed whopping 73% of CBO's lost coverage estimate comes from individual mandate repeal. Let me repeat that. A whopping 73% of CBO's lost coverage estimate comes from individual mandate repeal. Conservative health care policy wonk Avic Roy, a strong supporter of the imperiled Senate health care bill, wrote an eye-opening analysis over the weekend. He examined and applied leaked data in order to demonstrate how the nonpartisan CBO would score any, ladies and gentlemen, any GOP Obamacare replacement bill as denying, in quotes, coverage to at least 16 million to 21 million Americans. That's due to the CBO's fanatical belief in the power of the existing law's individual mandate tax, an article of faith to which they've clung despite hard, hard, ladies and gentlemen, contradictory contradictory evidence for the first time Roy is able to reveal exactly how ever how heavily and dubiously ladies and gentlemen CBO leans on the strength the individual mandate in producing its coverage numbers this is vitally important vitally important context for the current health care debate both in terms of swatting down Democrats favorite attack line as well as dressing addressing as moderate Republicans top hesitancy he begins by noting, ladies and gentlemen, that the bizarre stability of congressional bookkeepers, in quotes, loss coverage figures, no matter how vastly Republican back repeal and replace measures may differ. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. No need to continue on with that topic in regards to reading any more of that particular article off the townhall.com. If you want to go ahead, check out the article there. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A whopping 73 percent 73 percent of cbo's lost in quotations coverage estimate comes from the individual mandate repeal so there you have it ladies and gentlemen there you have it plain as day now you know the democrats and the liberals are going to swat that away and say this is this is just you know false and fake data this is false and fake information this has nothing to do with the current situation at hand in regards to the death spiral, death, excuse me, death spiral of Obamacare, which the Democrats have not offered any solution in regards to putting the paddles on the heart to resuscitate Obamacare. They have nothing. They didn't have anything. Never will. They want socialized medicine. They want single payer health care. That's what their ultimate goal is, ladies and gentlemen. Socialized, single payer health care. Now, seeing that they can't come to the forefront and say now that with the death spiral of Obamacare and now with this particular 
evidence, facts, and information brought to the table, ladies and gentlemen. At 73% of the CBO's loss coverage estimate comes from individual mandate repeal. And this mandate that we fought when it was trying to be passed, fought so hard against, and it eventually got passed. And the fact that the government, ladies and gentlemen, the federal government is imposing upon you, the American citizen, that you have to pay or purchase health care. And if you don't, then we're going to tax you. We're going we're gonna to hit you with a penalty. The IRS is going to come after your ass. Really? Is that the America that we're living in? Is that the America that we want to live in? Are you friggin' kidding me? These people are insane. Absolutely insane. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a health care expert. I'm not a health care Svengali <laughs> guru or anything by any stretch of the imagination. But I know this. And I know for having health care through my employer for all these years that I've been employed. When is that going to reach us? When is that going to touch us? And my particular employer has it touched and scraped your employer and where you work at? Now, with this debate in regards to how we're going to re replace, repeal and replace Obamacare, here's the thing. Like I said last week, how hard is it to just repeal Obamacare? It is not that hard. One paragraph will do it. Put it on Trump's desk and let him sign it. But what is the holdup, ladies and gentlemen? What is the pushback? Why is there pushback? You got to start thinking outside the box. These moderate, these leadership holding Republicans, they got something in the bag in regards to not wanting to repeal Obamacare. Replace Obamacare, it is going to be difficult because, hello, over a thousand pages worth of a bill, you really think we're going to replace it in, in a matter of months? It's going to take years, ladies and gentlemen, not months, years. Because as we peel away the onion of Obamacare, trying to replace it, we're going to find these hidden taxes, these hidden regulations, these hidden this, this hidden that. And then we're going to have to attack that, defeat that, repeal that back, and then replace it. As the health care bill overall. Repeal. How hard is it? All of these GOP candidates over the years. Promising. Telling us. That they're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. And then when it's time to step up to the plate. Nothing gets done. Absolutely nothing gets done. And we're going to sit around here and take it. Are we, gonna, are we actually going to sit around and take it, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know about you, but I'm certainly not going to take it. I'm not. It's, it's not going down like that, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. It is not going down like that. So, ladies and gentlemen, I got the first clip I want to play tonight. I only got a few clips tonight. I got a whole bunch of articles I need to get through and, and speak on. But this is something that, that needs to be <laughs> brought to the attention of those out in the world here. <laughs> this is absolutely priceless. I want to go to to Queens, New York and find this woman. This woman confronted Comrade de Blasio while he was rolling through Queens, New York, shaking hands, trying to get people on his side. But you know what? This lady, she wasn't even even part of the crowd that was gathering around speaking to Comrade de Blasio. She was in her car with her husband and she said pull the f over i have something to say to that punk mofo and check out this story and this is exactly what went down i was used to sparring with other political figures but it was a potential face-off with a feisty 63 year old mother from queens who caused mayor de blasio to turn and run cbs2 political reporter marcia kramer has the confrontation and the aftermath 
The woman in the white shirt single-handedly brought WrestleMania to the streets of Whitestone, Queens. But her opponent, Bill de Blasio, was no Hulk Hogan or The Rock. He was more like the cowardly lion in The Wizard of Oz. I want to know why you let your police officers down and our country down by going to Germany and protesting against our country. The mayor was in Whitestone to announce new funding to fix city sidewalks damaged by tree roots. Vicky Palladino was driving by, ordered her husband to stop the car. She pounced as the mayor was leaving. He started to walk towards her, but when he heard what she was saying, he simply fled, taking refuge in his SUV as Vicky kept it up. I don't care about the trees. Pay your police officers. Today, she was still asking questions. Why did you go to Germany? Why did you stand with the communists, with the anarchists, with the socialists, when you're supposed to be here taking care of our business? Our police officers. She was referring to de Blasio's controversial trip to speak at a protest rally in Germany only hours after police officer Mio Sotis Familia was killed. And she was furious about his high-handed treatment of her. She said the mayor turned to a security detail and said, Very quietly, you need to get this woman away from me. Or get me away from this woman. Political consultants say that for a man seeking re-election, that was a big mistake. It's the wrong strategy. It's a bad attitude, frankly. When you're the mayor, you serve the people. When you run into the public and they may not agree with you, you still have to deal with them. And how you, how you handle that is really indicative of how you treat all voters. So it seems that Vicky's visit with Mayor de Blasio has given her a little taste for politics. So, Vicky, would you ever think of running for mayor? Absolutely. So, as Vicky would say, bring it on. You In bet. Whitestone, Queens, I'm Marcia Kramer, CBS 2 News. Well, the mayor's office did not respond to requests for comment, but while the mayor may not want to speak with Vicky, his political opponent sure do. She has received calls from both Nicole Maliotakis and Bo Deedle, and she is meeting with Maliotakis tomorrow. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A fed up, fed up woman from Queens. Vicky from Queens, ladies and gentlemen. She wasn't having it. She was not going to allow de Blasio, comrade de Blasio, to roll through her town speaking that utter nonsense, thinking that, you know, if I just show up, ladies and gentlemen, if I just show up and start shaking hands. What well, the the fellow citizenry of the New York City that everything is going to be fine. They're going to just disregard the fact that I spent their money and went over to Germany to protest and resist against Trump. <laughs> Vicky was not having it, ladies and gentlemen, and neither should you, my fellow citizens of New York City. I know you are a predominantly Democrat liberal city. But for my fellow Republicans and conservatives and libertarians, independents who are just completely and utterly done with comrade de Blasio, then you need to let your voice be heard. Stop staying on the sidelines. Stop kicking your feet up. Stop thinking that, you know, it's New York and we're going to handle it the way we handle it. You know, we, we take it in, we take it out and we do this and we do that just because we're New Yorkers. No. Are you are you enjoying the spike in violence in New York City? Are you enjoying the fact that our law enforcement is under attack and are getting assassinated left and right? You may not be a fan of President Donald J. Trump. You may not be a Republican. But I'm telling you this, my fellow liberal Democrats in the New York City area. Do you want to continue this downward spiral, this downward decline that you're seeing in your city? I hope not. I really hope and pray, ladies and gentlemen, that this is something that you do not want to see. This is something that you don't want your future generations, your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren down the line. Shaking their heads wondering what the hell did my grandparents and parents and great grandparents do when this was going down? Why did they allow this? Here I am getting taxed damn near 90 percent. <laughs> OK, because right now, what is it? Almost 60 percent of, of New Yorkers paychecks are getting 
pulled and snatched away and confiscated by taxes? Are you freaking kidding me? That right there should be something that they should be storming the streets in New York City in every borough. Forget the Tea Party for a second. Let's just talk about it from a common sense aspect. From a a, 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 a man to man, woman to woman, child to child aspect. That number one, we as adults, we as parents, do not want the government siphoning, stealing more than half of our paycheck. And then the fact that we live in New York City, and everything else within New York City is high. Rent, mortgages, uh, and everything else that you can think of. Corporate tax, everything else that you can think of. It is New York and, and, and cities in California now with the, with, the, with the state of Oregon or Oregon, depending on how you say it and who you are and where you're from. The state of Oregon is becoming the next California, as I stated earlier. They're becoming the next California. Taxing those individuals into oblivion. You're going to see a mad dash, and we've seen a mad dash of a lot of individuals and companies and corporations leave New York City because of the tax implications going on in that city. Now, you may look at it where, hmm, I don't live there, I ain't got to deal with it. Really? So how was it in your town? Well, you may have it a little bit better depending on where you're living in, in the States. But I guarantee you, 90 plus percent of us out here are dealing with taxation that we don't want, <laughs> that we could do without, that shouldn't be placed upon us, point blank. The federal government, ladies and gentlemen, should not have control of how your paycheck, and ladies and gentlemen, I don't have any issues, none whatsoever, in regards to paying taxes, but it's the amount, where it's going, and who's in control of it that I have an issue with. Because, yeah, I want my roads to be fixed and paved and things of that nature. I want to, I want to make sure, and put it this way, ladies and gentlemen, if we would allow privatized companies to handle some of these federal government responsibilities, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in, most definitely. And as I'm looking at my screen, I really hope that I'm not frozen on Facebook Live. Okay, there I am. I'm back. Maybe it was just on my screen here on my application. But as I digress and get back to the point at hand, in regards to this whole notion of being taxed into oblivion, being taxed to the point where we can't even save any money, yours truly got nothing in my savings account, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't afraid to say it because it's the truth. I got no money in my savings account. If something was to happen, my refrigerator breaks down or my car breaks down. And it's hundreds and, you know, close to thousands of dollars and things of that nature. Guess what I'm doing? Putting that on a credit card. And then there you go. I'm pulling up and, and, and making the debt go up again once again. And then I'm struggling and struggling and struggling to pay off those credit cards again. Do you really think that should be the scenario? Do you really think that should be what's prevalent in our society? For those individuals out here working our asses off, doing what we can within our power to make sure that our families are taken care of? Why do we have to go to this length, ladies and gentlemen? Why? We shouldn't. There shouldn't be this situation to where we're grasping at straws, living paycheck to paycheck. It shouldn't be the case. It should have never been the case. But when you have the federal government and these politicians in D.C., power-hungry politicians who basically have your existence almost, if you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, because what can we do about it? All we can do is hopefully pass laws that will combat and, 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 and hopefully reverse some of this craziness that's going on but who are who who are we looking at that's going to supposedly step up to the plate to get these laws passed M money power hungry politicians they don't give a damn about us never have never will maybe a handful maybe a couple dozen handfuls 
But that's about it. These people are in it for themselves. Point blank. These individuals come into Congress. Hopefully they, they, they do what they have to do in order to, I guess, I, to me, they're kowtowing to their constituents. They're not listening. They're not putting proper legislation <coughs> up for uh, votes and things of that nature. They're not putting up proper legislation that is going to alleviate some of this pressure being brought down on us out here, the average, normal, everyday, hardworking American. Where do you where do you think? Okay, look at it this way, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a parent and you have children, and say they're not they're not out of high school yet, and you don't have to worry, you have to you got years down the line to be worrying about college and things in that nature. But yet you do have to worry about that, ladies and gentlemen. You have to worry about it when they're freaking babies at this point, because of how much money you have to put aside in order to number one have that nest egg for them so if for whatever reason you know they may not be the smartest tool and the sharpest tool in the shed as they say and they have to you know put up and 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 and, and front most of the money for their college and and university then it's on us parents to set aside this money unless you have individuals out there and we have them out there that work their asses off Go to school and work and pay for their tuition, books, housing, food, and everything else. But then there are situations where it doesn't happen that way. That's why I have a son who's graduating high school in 2018. He's all stressed out and and and, and worried about what is going to happen and what he's going to do. Should he go to school? He doesn't want to accrue any debt. That's where we're at right now, ladies and gentlemen. That's where we are at. And it's shameful. It's despicable. It's beyond the pale. To where we have to almost get to the point where, wait, hold on. How is it that we're at this point? It's that way. But ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me end this with this. If we're going to make any any type of change going forward, then it's no longer about us. It's about we, not us, but we, we need to make a stand. We can no longer sit on the sidelines. As I say all the time, we as a collective cannot allow these idiots in DC to control, dictate, and ultimately lay the paths for our futures. We can no longer allow this to happen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going, I got a couple clips I'm going to play here. I'm going to play the first clip and then speak on it and then play the second clip and speak on it. And if you want to call yours truly, go ahead and give me a call, 412 Three zero one three six six six. That's four one two three zero one three six six six. And go ahead and give me a call, and we can converse. But I got this first clip. It's my man Scaramucci. <laughs> that is that is an Italian name, ladies and gentlemen. Scaramucci. He was on Jake Tapper over the weekend, and this is a this is not even a minute's worth of clips, but these are the highlights that I wanted to snag. And I'm going to go ahead and play the first one, and we're going to go ahead and converse and talk about that. Pretty good stuff. Uh, even though this man was a skeptic, even though this man was a vaunted, you know, detractor of Trump way back when. But now he's on board. And I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. There are some things about his leanings, like gun control and stuff like that, that we can talk about. But coming out of the gate swinging like this. I'm all for it, and I'm backing it. Would you take that since meeting? That, since that's been overused, what I have taken that meeting, I don't. I'm not sure. 
how's that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it honestly and tell you that I'm not sure. Since I went to Harvard Law School, I probably would have asked a few people, and somebody probably would have said to me, you know, get a cutout to go take the meeting and see if there's any legitimacy to it. Once they realized there was no legitimacy to it, people were walking out or they were on their iPhones. It was a non-event, Jake. We want to make that into a two-week, a four-week news cycle. That's fine, but it was a non-event. I only and it had no imp had no impact on the campaign. So the only reason I brought no. it up is because you said nobody from the campaign met with anybody from Russia. Okay, and there, of course, Jake Tapper has to end it with that little, you know, nugget. Of, but you said that you know, in, in the campaign met with people from Russia. Who cares? I sent Jake Tapper a text. Excuse me, a text. I ain't got a homeboy's phone number. I sent him a tweet today, and you know what? I'm gonna go look at it right now. If you just bear with me for a second as I continue on here on the Dan Adams show, live on Facebook, live and on Spreaker. <laughs> I sent him a tweet and I hope I, I hope I, you know, kind of broke it down very simply, but very concise in regards to how most of us feel in regards to this idiotic Russian collusion nonsense. But this is what I said. Let me see if I can find it here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, here we go. I said to at Jake Tapper, if POTUS or his campaign colluded with Russia, did that make me pull the lever for Trump? No, no one knew of any collusion whatsoever. You didn't even know anything about it. There may have been rumblings, but this whole avalanche of nonsense in regards to collusion happened after the election. So all of us out here who voted for Trump, we didn't even know that any of this so-called non-existent collusion was even on the table for us to even think about. We knew what we were thinking about when we walked into that ballot box. We knew what we were thinking about when we pulled that lever for Trump. Hell no to Hillary Clinton. Never Hillary. All day, every day. Time to make America great again. It's time to Tie up the boots, brush off the dirt a little bit, not too much, just enough so if you walk in someone's house, they ain't going to yell at you. <laughs> but you know where I'm going with this, ladies and gentlemen. No one who voted for Trump had any inkling, any knowledge of any kind of Russian collusion when they pushed that button, pulled that lever, or for those who were early voters, when they sent in that vote for Trump, no one, no one, ladies and gentlemen. So for these individuals to continually going down this path, it's embarrassing at this point. It's been beyond embarrassing, weeks worth of embarrassment. But now it's to the point now where all they're doing now, they have nothing. When I'm talking about the lamestream media, number one, they are the, the mouthpiece for the Democrat Party. They have nothing to offer. So they're going to continue going down this stupid, idiotic Russian collusion story because they have nothing to offer the American people. Absolutely nothing. They can't even fix the ship that's about to go down like the Titanic in regards to Obamacare. They have no solutions, no offerings, nothing. So let's let's. Continue down this path of Russian collusion. Get everybody continually distracted. Make sure that you and I, and I, I'm, I'm talking about those who are informed, get all heated, get all frustrated for no reason whatsoever, just because these people are idiots. And that's why we get frustrated and, and get sometimes get out of line. But for the low information voter out there, this is nothing but a smoke screen. This is nothing but these individuals doing an okie doke. Look over here while we're doing this over here. So I'm going to go ahead and play the second clip and we're going to discuss further in regards to how Scaramucci has come on the scene and he is taking no prisoners. Uh, the president likes speaking from the heart. He likes telling you what he likes and he dislikes. Uh, he's the type of coach that I worked very well with uh, in high school football. 
uh, it's okay with me if the president doesn't like certain things that I'm doing. We're all on the same team. Uh, I would prefer the direct and immediate feedback as opposed to anything else. What I don't like about Washington, if we say one syllable or one sentence, uh, this guy said something bad about me, then all of a sudden they have to be my mortal enemy. I, I, don't, I don't think that's how it works in American business. I can sit across the table from somebody that worked with me in my company that I founded and say, here are five things that I don't like about what you're doing, and we have to fix it. And by the way, tomorrow I'm going to have a meeting with the communications staff and say, hey, I don't like these leaks. And so we're going to stop the leaks. And if we don't stop the leaks, I'm going to stop you. It's just really that simple. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we've been wanting and asking for in regards to these leaks. Someone within that communication staff is getting information from the deep state within the federal government. Getting all of this leaked information, classified information from the alphabet agencies. And somehow some way, some form or fashion, leaking these stories. Well, I'm hoping Scaramucci is a man of his word. I hope that he will let everyone know that you have been put on blast. I have given you notice that if you leak, I hear one more leak, I'm firing. If I was him, I would fire everyone. And then I would do something like, you know, process of elimination, start bringing people back into the fold. Maybe some ones that I trusted, bring them in first and see what happens and just, you know, cr cancel them out, cross them out as, as suspects. <laughs> okay. Go that route first. And then, you know, the ones that you, you know, check that dude out. Mm, what's going on with him? Well, he's a little quiet lately. Bring that one in the fold, and if a story leaks, boom, you know it's that person. That's how I would do it. Maybe you have a different way. Give me a call, 412-301-3666. That's 412-301-3666. Don't be afraid, ladies and gentlemen. Just because I have a somewhat gift of gab and people telling me I have a great radio voice and things of that nature, that don't be afraid to call me up, and we can converse and talk about anything you want. I may be talking about a specific topic at the point that you're calling. I don't care. You want to talk about something else? Bring it up and we'll discuss it. 412-301-3666. That's 412-301-3666. Now, let me go to the hot off the presses information overload hours. I <laughs> sound like Sean Handy up in this piece. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. Here's some, here's some, here's some great great information if you haven't heard exclusive from daily caller fbi seized smashed hard drives from debbie washerman schultz schultz excuse me it aids home let me repeat ladies and gentlemen this sounds vaguely familiar fbi seized smashed hard drives from Debbie Washerman Schultz, IT AIDS home. FBI agents seized smashed computer hard drives from the home of Florida Democratic Republican, excuse me, representative, excuse whoa, let me start that over. Because if I was to lump that lady as a, well, you know what, some of the Republicans are just like Democrats, so let me take that back. But let me re 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 restart again and, and, and make sure I'm saying the correct word. <laughs> FBI agents seized, seized smashed computer hard drives from the home of Florida Democratic Rep Debbie Washerman Schultz's, wait, say that five times fast, Schultz's Information Technology Administrator, according to two sources with knowledge of the investigation. Pakistani born Iman Arwan, longtime right hand IT aide to the former Democrat National Ch Committee Chairman, Chairwoman, excuse me, has since desperately tried to get the hard drives back. An individual whom FBI investigators interviewed in the case told the Daily Caller News Foundation's investigative group. An additional source in Congress with direct knowledge of the case, speaking on condition of anonymity because of the sensitivity of the probe, confirmed that the FBI has joined what Politico, and this is on the Politico, okay, previously described as a Capitol Police criminal probe into serious, potentially illegal violations 
on the house IT network by Imram and three of his relatives who had access to the emails and files of the more than two dozen House Democrats who employed them on a part-time basis. Capitol Police have also seized computer equipment tied to the Florida lawmaker. Awan's younger brothers, Abid and Jamal, his wife, Hina Alvi, and Rayo Abbas, Imran's best friend, are also under investigation. There have been no arrests in the case, which is like, I'm thinking to myself, okay, now we have this particular information come to light. Smashed hard drives, ladies and gentlemen. If everything is so transparent, if everything is above code, if everything is done to the letter of the law, then why are these individuals smashing and destroying hard drives? Sounds a little little like some individual that we know, some presidential candidate, you know, a.k.a. Teflon Hillary Clinton, who went on a rampage, not her, but her people in her camp, her IT folk, went on a similar rampage, took hammers, to all of her personal portable devices, Blackberries, iPads, and everything else that you think of. Took hammers and smashed them to pieces. So now we have the front runner and candidate, Hillary Clinton, who's been under investigation, under probes, under, <laughs> whoa, probes, look out, probes and everything else in regards to her shenanigans and then that revelation came to light in regards to her IT folk that's right folk taking hammers to devices and destroying them now we have this revelation that black woman sounding Democrat Debbie Washerman Schultz that's right before I knew who this chick was I thought she was black Debbie Washerman Schultz sounds like a black woman. Just if you ever listen to her and close your eyes, just disregard that she's white. She sounds like she's black. <laughs> but now we have this revelation, ladies and gentlemen, that this woman had her IT folk take hammers to hard drives. If you have nothing to hide, if you have nothing to worry about in regards to to investigations, probes, and everything else that you can think of. There should be no need for pulling out hammers, sledgehammers, pile drivers, <laughs> and everything else that was probably used to destroy these hard drives. I'm surprised they didn't take them to a shredder and shred those suckers. Wait a minute. Hmm. I think somebody read or bleach bit them or something. Hmm. Somebody already. Hmm. We all know who did that. But ladies and gentlemen, here we have obstruction of justice. That information was not hers to destroy. That is federal government property. And who finances backs allows the federal government to exist? We, the American taxpayer so now we have another situation ladies and gentlemen where illegal activities are being shoved in our face and more than likely ladies and gentlemen nothing is going to be done about it absolutely nothing is going to be done about it now I don't know about you but I'm going to keep an eye on this I'm going to you know Make sure it's in the in the fold of of put it in the timeline and all that good stuff. We'll see what happens. You know, kind of have an inkling as to what's going to happen. Nothing, but hey, who knows? Maybe we'll see something different this time around. I doubt it, but who knows? This isn't a headline. This is just an, 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 an amendment, an addendum to what's going on in the city of Chicago. So over the weekend, six dead, thirty-five wounded. No end in sight for Chicago violence. If there's one thing that gangbangers on the south and west sides of Chicago are good at, 
is shooting people no matter how many cops are around. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Despite the increased presence of federal agents, Trump dispatched federal agents aiding the Chicago PD. Six people were murdered and 35 others were wounded in shootings across the Chicagoland area over this past weekend. While this is a precipitous drop in victims of shootings, look, Lord have mercy. Hashtag Lord have mercy. Here we are talking about an increased presence of federal agents. Six people were murdered, 35 shot and injured. But now, while this is a precipitous drop in victims of shootings, Lord have mercy. This is a precipitous drop in Chicago. Six dead, 35 wounded. From the previous weekend, this past weekend's numbers merely dropped back to its usual average. Let me repeat that sentence again. While this is a precipitous drop in victims of shootings from the previous weekend, this past weekend's numbers merely dropped to its usual average. Ladies and gentlemen, that is utterly and beyond the pale ridiculous. How is it that six dead and 35 wounded is an average, ladies and gentlemen, an average of what goes down in Chicago? I am almost at a loss of words. I don't even know where to continue from this point. I just wanted to let you know that Chicago, a.k.a. Little Baghdad, is still hot and heavy in regards to deaths and wounded. I, ladies and gentlemen, we can speak until the cows come home. We can speak until we are blue in the face. We can speak until we no longer have a voice. But do we have an answer for this? Do we have concrete solutions for individuals who take it upon themselves when they wake up, get themselves together, go about their day, and realize, you know what? I got to stay strapped. I got to stay packed. Or I'm going to get got and done in this hellhole of a place that we cut. Now, let me take that back. Let me let me take that back. And I apologize for calling Chicago and hellhole because most of Chicago, ladies and gentlemen, is not like little Baghdad. There are many, many sections of Chicago that are not overwhelmed by violence. But those areas that are, ladies and gentlemen, those areas that are, I do not have. I may have talked about it, spoke on it, yelled about it, screamed about it in the past in regards to what I think should happen to curtail and hopefully end this violence. But I'm at a point where I don't have the answers. All I can do is pray and leave it in God's hands. All I can do is continue to state these facts. I can continually state my disapproval in the behavior of my fellow man. That will never stop. That will never cease. But having the you coming to me wanting answers in regards to how to end this violence. I just don't have a playbook. I don't have a diagram. I don't have a gun char. I don't have an outline, ladies and gentlemen, that I can put right in front of individuals in Chicago and in Detroit and in New Orleans and anywhere else where violence is at a maximum, where violence is taking over cities, where violence, ladies and gentlemen, seems to be the end all be all in these communities 
I just don't have it. But I will leave it in God's hands and hopefully maybe some enlightening will happen within the minds, the hearts and the souls of these individuals who think that violence is the way. Who think that taking out their fellow man is the way. Now. Like I said, I got a lot of lot. I'm like Rush Limbaugh up in this piece today. I got a lot of stuff on plate and on tap. And I only got about nine minutes left. So let me see if I can get through most of these before my time ends. Here's a story, ladies and gentlemen, that'll crack you up. Title, act like a grown-up. Drunk driver sobs when she loses plea deal by coming four hours late to court. Maybe you've seen this story come across your timeline. A Miami woman lost her prearranged, prearranged, ladies and gentlemen, not something that was in limbo, not something that the judge needed to possibly either say yay or nay on. This was prearranged. A Miami woman lost her prearranged plea agreement when she showed up to court late. It didn't help that the accident she caused left a popular principal as an amputee. Miami-Dade County Judge Diane Ward threw out a plea deal. That's right, she threw it out and ordered a trial in the matter when defendant Marilyn Aguilera sauntered into the courtroom hours, four hours, late to enter the agreement on record, leaving the alleged drunk driver in tears. Why are you crying, lady? Uh, if there was something that was, you know, life-changing, that was of, of utmost importance, was a, an emergency that, that dealt with you or your loved ones, why in the hell were you four hours late? Now, the April 26, 2016 accident left South Dade Senior High School Principal Javier Perez with both his legs amputated and another person, Elias Espinosa, also suffering injuries. Now, at this point, the fact that she screwed up, the fact that she showed up four hours late, I have no sympathy for her because she could at least, and I'm, I'm wondering, during those four hours, was there any point in time where either her or her lawyer let the court know that something was going on that was obstructing her from getting to the courthouse. I, that's, that's something I want to know, and I'm going to quickly go through this article and see if I can find it, because I didn't read the whole article before I came on air. Let's see. This is unusual because she couldn't pay. Okay, so it seems as if she may have had some issues with lawyers, paying them and things of that nature so here we have a, an unfortunate incident an accident that left the man as an amputee and another individual with serious injuries this woman had a prearranged prearranged ladies and gentlemen plea to where if she was to show up on time and and to have it on the record in court that number one there would be no trial. She would pay any compensatory damages in regards to, you know, suffering and things of that nature in regards to the victims. This lady showed up four hours late. I have no sympathy for her. If she didn't try to reach out to the court or to anyone, shoot, call the security guard at the front desk and say, yo, I'm running late. I'm stuck in traffic or this or that. Maybe there would have been a different outcome. Maybe. I doubt it. But at least she would have made the effort and let the court know that I'm in a, a pickle here. And this is where I stand in regards to trying to get to the court. And I can't because of this situation that's been brought upon me. I guarantee nothing like that happened. Almost guarantee it. And reading into this article, the fact that she had problems paying her lawyers, that's a whole other different story. All right. <laughs> Here we go from one ridiculous story to another. New York Times writer declares walking white women racist. They won't move when a black man is in their path. Okay, I'm going to repeat the title of that article once again. New York Times writer declares walking white women racist. They won't move 
when a black man is in their path. <laughs> you could add walking to the list of things white people do that are considered racist. New York Times reporter Greg Howard wrote about what he believes is the racism of white women in a piece published Wednesday titled, Was That Racist? Walking courteously doesn't take much. Just, uh, this is like a, a typo. Spatial awareness, foresight, and empathy. In seven years of living and walking here, I found that most people walk courteously, but that white women, at least when I'm in their path, do not, he wrote. Okay, so this is a black man, okay, writer for the New York Slimes took it upon himself to write an article supposedly calling out white women, walking white women, any walking white women that he comes into contact with as racist because they don't want to shuck and jive out of his path. This is what happens when your brain is stuck on stupid. And this is what happens when individuals are allowed to Go off the reservation, leave common sense at the door, and walk into a pasture of sheer idiotic lunacy. That is what the liberal leftist numbnut moon bats are currently, currently holding court. These individuals do not care about how others view them. They do not care if they come off as ignorant. They do not care that they are looked upon as some of the dumbest folk walking this planet. They do not care. They want to put out inflammatory stories. They want to somehow ruffle the feathers of the very fabric of the racial lines that are being pulled at on a daily basis. They are not looking for unity and harmony amongst the races. They want to pull us apart, divide us and conquer us. They want us to be submissive to their teachings, their thinking and their ideology. And ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go down this path. We cannot even look at the exit in regards to allowing liberals, the leftist liberal, numb the lamestream media to control the narrative. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Dan Adams show live here on Facebook live, live on Spreaker. I appreciate it. I thank you. I applaud you for hanging in there. This has been the Dan Adams Show, a.k.a. the Social Conservative, the DA, and the Prosecutor. Big up to my, my homeboy Wayne Dupree, CEO of War Radio. He'll be coming up in a couple hours, actually an hour's time. But up next, for those who are Spreakerites, got my man Hutch Bailey Jr. doing his thing, as he does. Hutch Bailey Jr. So until next time, this coming Sunday... The Dan Adams Show will be live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Facebook Live and on Spreaker. May God continue to bless you and yours. May he keep you and your family safe. Until next time, God bless. Peace. Let it, let it ride out. Let it, let it, let it ride out. Thank you.